The following is my final submission for a class titled Basic Principles of Motion at my university and it served as a beginner's course to the fundamentals of 2D animation. It ran for a school semester, roughly 13 weeks, and I took this in my first semester as a second year student at university. I didn't want to just upload the video as is because I literally just started animation that semester so I'm not at a level where I feel comfortable flexing and showing off like here's my reel, please hire me or anything. There are definitely very glaring mistakes and I don't want anyone here who intends to pursue animation to feel like these are top tier flawless animations that should serve as a point of reference. Uh, so in this video, I will be talking about my process, the feedback that I got from my professor, and anything else that may be in any way educational. So hopefully, you can still learn something, despite the standard not being very high. And to any of my juniors in university who somehow finds this video, I hope this kind of prepares you for what you'll be learning in class. By the way, my professor's initials were DB, so if you get the other professor, I cannot guarantee that you will get the same assignments. So first I'm going to play the full reel without any commentary, and those who don't want to stick around for like the breakdown, you can just click off after that point. As you can probably tell, the first few weeks of animation were done traditionally. We used light boxes in school, we used pencil and paper, and we would then move the photos that we took to TV paint for editing. Due to COVID-related restrictions, it was extremely difficult for everyone to access the animation lab, so we were allowed to carry out our assignments on Rough Animator on the iPad, which is $7 if I'm not wrong. This was an exception that was made only for our batch, so you should keep that in mind. Uh, for week one, we started off with the bouncing ball, and we had to animate two balls, one of a, a lighter variety, maybe like a rubber one, and the other one was a heavy one. So most of us went with a bowling ball for this one, because it was the obvious choice. The main thing uh, we were told to look out for was how much further the ball travelled when it was uh, light and how it would bounce much less when it was heavier or not at all, maybe just once or twice. For my submission in particular, my professor's feedback was that the ball looked as if it was alive and moving as a living thing would, and this was mainly because of the amount of time the ball spent in contact with the ground. This is more apparent in the light ball, and I can pinpoint where I went wrong because I remember making that exact decision. I had three frames where the ball is in contact with the ground, where one would have sufficed. If you google the frames for a normal bouncing ball animation on google images, you will see people normally draw the ball stretched just before it hits the ground, uh, still suspended mid-air, on the next frame it's squashed as it hits the ground, and then the next frame is just mirrored of the previous one. Uh, it Just having that one frame of impact on the ground makes it look faster, and my 
choice here was to actually do an in-between for those two frames which are the squash and stretch and as a result it kind of looks like a frog having to wind up before every jump and it doesn't look like it's jumping because gravity and like physics is telling it to it looks like it's jumping because it wants to yeah, that's where I went wrong basically and what I think uh, is appreciated in this assignment was the idea of giving the ball three-dimensionality where you can kind of see the design of the ball rotating. So I do think details like that were appreciated by my professor because he did comment on that in uh, everyone's assignments as well. For week two, the assignment was titled Creative Ball, where you could just animate whatever you wanted so long as there was a ball in there which was kind of bouncing. My classmates did things like having the ball transform into a small dragon, having it be tethered on a string, etc. I went with having it hover a bit in mid-air, then transform into a robot with legs and then it would scale a wall. I fixed my previous issue of the ball looking like a frog by limiting the amount of frames where it was in contact with the ground to just one. I did do a test for this in Procreate so that I wouldn't waste any paper, and to some extent I do kind of prefer the Procreate one, especially at the point where the robot lands and there's a little squash as it, the legs kind of spread out to support the body's weight. My professor didn't really have any specific feedback. I think I was last for the critique in class, as in I was the last person whose work was looked at, so everyone at that point was kind of tired. For week 3, we were learning about uh, how to animate a balloon pretty much, but the focus of it wasn't necessarily the balloon, but more so the string and how that follows through with the balloon. We were studying things like how a flag flows in the wind, and just watching videos of other people animating balloons and strings. Uh, the main thing was animating the string trailing behind, how it would flow with the wind, and then how it would gradually come to a stop as the, as the balloon stopped moving. I think I was really weak in this one, because I had to actually repeat this three, four, maybe even five times before final submission, because I could not figure it out. I could not figure out how to get that curve moving through the string, and eventually uh, smoothing out into a straight line that would swing forwards and then back, and I do feel like I could have had more frames at the end to have the string come to a more gradual stop because I do feel that the animation looks a bit abrupt and my professor's feedback was more or less what I said above and also the balloon comes to a stop far too quickly it lacks that bouncy floaty quality that a balloon would have week four character design we actually took a step back for animating uh, this week we had to design two characters one human and one anthropomorphic. Uh, this is a side note for my juniors. This assignment is the same pretty much every year. You will always have to design one human and one anthro character. I actually just rehashed two characters from my webcomic for this one because creatively, I was not in a good place and I was very drained for some reason. So it was a matter of just taking existing designs and turning their designs into something more interesting, more captivating, easier to animate. You know that meme that's going around where it's like character design means you gotta have a good silhouette and it's just a picture of like uh, the bird in that sad poem picture? Yeah, it's something like that. Uh, because the main reason for me wanting to change designs was I didn't want to have to animate Atlas's scarf and I also didn't want to have to animate the bird character's tail coats. But I ended up doing that anyway. So, joke's on me, I guess. I think character design is really fun, so I was just messing around with the characters a lot. I was just trying to give them super identifiable features, such as the giant wizard hat and the huge lump of feathers around the collar. I'm not sure what the term for that is. My professor said that he enjoyed the fact that I gave colors and had an expression sheet and even had this little snippet of the characters interacting. And in Karen's character design sheet, he noted the ability to draw feet in perspective, which he identified as being very important that I should probably try and remember because I immediately failed to do so in Atlas's character sheet. Other, other than that, he overall enjoyed Karen's design, but he felt that I needed to work out how Atlas's hat worked, especially how it sat on the head its height and how he wanted it to look more interesting instead of like a traffic cone on the head. I think I got caught trying to make it a really symmetrical design so it would be easier on me when I animated. 
but I did try and resolve that in future weeks and it just kind of became a normal head because I couldn't think of anything better. Week 5, turnarounds. We did turnarounds. We were told to choose poses which would be easy to turn around because some people had their characters posing and stuff in like a ballet pose so that wasn't fun for anybody. Uh, so that's why Atlas is just kind of standing there normally, perfectly symmetrical, arms at his sides. Uh, and for an unwelcome challenge, I had Karen stick their hand out, which was an especially bad choice. Because my main issue was that the feet kind of bounce around on both characters, and I'm really bad at drawing feet, so animating feet is... You can imagine how much that sucks for me. The head turnaround for Karen, he pointed out a few things that could be improved. I could have done a guide for the glasses, which would have made it easier to rotate in perspective. By that I mean like drawing the perspective. Well, I'll just show it on screen, I can't use my words. I think I just got lazy honestly, which is my bad. And this week was the most intensive in my opinion, with four whole turnarounds to send in, alongside other submissions. So this week was a hellscape for me. For week 6, we had to animate our characters making expressions, having some form of personality. It was mostly the process of applying squash and stretch to a character's features as opposed to a ball. We had to give them anticipation for when shit would happen. It was small things like having the character's eyes convey what was going on. Stuff like the character would take at least one blink worth of time to acknowledge something off screen. So my professor comment my professor commented that Atlas's one was relatively weak, also cause he moves way too far from the start to the end, and the hat falling looks kind of awkward in the end result. For Karen, it's a little bit smoother, although there is some jank in the neck, cause I had not figured out how long the character's neck was at the time. And another comment that didn't necessarily go out for me, but more so the entire class and maybe a bit of mine, was that simplicity would be much more effective in this particular assignment. As opposed to having your character go through the entire range of human emotions to describe their personality, you should aim to just have one or two small ones that are much easier for the audience to get uh, what the characters like. It's more captivating overall, I guess, for animation. It has more appeal to it. So instead of saying, like, my character has a dark past, so in this expression assignment, you can see her watching her friend brutally die, and then she realizes her friend betrayed her, so she's angry, and then she goes through the five stages of grief, and then she becomes happy again. Instead of doing something like that, you could just have the character go from, like, neutral expression to, like, angry and intimidating to just show that this character isn't gonna take shit, I'm not sure. Uh, in Atlas's case, however, uh, I would say what I was going for was that he's just a timid child. And in Karen's, I, I wanna say that they're a cautious and mysterious person, but I probably didn't capture that very well. So this is the thing that stressed me the hell out. Walk cycles. It was my first ever walk cycle, just like how everything else is my first ever animation. I don't feel qualified to give any advice on how to animate one, I'm still working through the details myself, but in my personal opinion, the head moves way too much in this one. The character design hides the waist and crotch area of the character, so sometimes animating the legs of the character is troublesome because the length of them keeps changing because I don't know where they start and end. For Karen, he appreciated the personality in the walk, with one hand on the waist, but you can very clearly see where one cycle ends, and I found out how to resolve this really, really slight mistake in the run cycle week. The major issue of both of, both of these is the feet not rolling nicely off the ground, and the ankle not following this one wave that it normally should follow. I'll see if I can find a diagram on the internet so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Run cycle. I actually did the cleanup and color for both of these because I had time and I was also curious to see how hard it would be to do cleanup. I can safely report that it's pretty hard. Uh, my professor was not keen on this because the thrill of seeing colors on screen after 8 weeks distracts from the many issues which I will now proceed to point out. For Atlas, uh, the same issue as before, the leg length is awkward. Also, 
if you notice, his head doesn't bob up and down as much as it should. If I'm not wrong, it's a, the for running, your head doesn't uh, move up and down as much as you would when just walking normally, but it's still very much present. But I, for some reason, I chose to get rid of it altogether, which results in everything looking like it's pivoting around his head. It's kind of weird now that I look at it. And the back of his coat keeps going up for some reason. For Karen, uh, the comment was that it was actually pretty well done. He liked the form that I managed to draw, where you can see the rotation in the body from side to side as they run. It gives it that depth, that three-dimensionality. The one thing he wanted to see was better bounce on the feathers and better follow-through on the coattails. And he actually drew over the animation to show me what he was talking about. So here's his animation for everyone to see. His additions are the red color lines. Uh, I apparently had a lot of free time this week because I threw in this animation of my D&D &D character nut, which he looked at because he saw it on my iPad as like the thumbnail for the project. And he forced me to let him see it because he was interested and then he critiqued it. So anyway, he said it was pretty good, so I'm thankful for that. And his comment was that the dancing light in front of my character needs to follow that same movement as the coattails on Karen or the balloon string. That sense of follow through with the wind and the air and whatever. Uh, for weeks 9 to 13, it was our final assignment. We only had to submit one animation this week. Uh, you had to have either a character interacting with a heavy object or both of your characters interacting. I went with the heavy object one because I thought it would be less stressful I think both would have been equally stressful, actually looking back at it now. Uh, but for the good comments, he liked the staging of it, he liked that I drew the scene in perspective, and the idea was simple, clear, effective. It gets the message across, the character's just living a heavy object and they're weak. The so-called rough version of the animation was apparently well received by him, probably because I got my idea out really quick, and there was personality to the characters simply by having them fall over like a dumbass. And he gave a lot of feedback to this one, like having the character move their body towards the book to make it parallel, to uh, show that they are trying to maintain their balance as, as they lift it. And having small details like leaning back to support the weight and having their knees wobble a bit as they try and stand. The parts which didn't turn out great in the final were the things that I mentioned, like I couldn't draw the knees wobbling cleanly. I couldn't figure out how to get them to like kind of shake convincingly as well as you can kind of see where I got lazy and just copied and pasted the frame and moved it slightly to the top right to show shaking. In the last few frames the head is meant to land on the book and just bend over it uh, but I think I forgot because I drew it kind of just passing through the book as if it isn't there. And I only noticed this after submission, so that's on me, and I probably lost marks for that. But apart from that, the characters' expressions were generally well done. Bonus points for perspective, though it's not 100% accurate. As you can see, the book is actually a bit too big as it falls behind. And the size of the character kind of... It's not really consistent with the perspective grid in my opinion. That's the entirety of my breakdown of my animation reel for basic principles of motion. I do not feel qualified to give anyone any more advice and animation as of right now, so if you have a question, direct it at someone more skilled, because I may give you a very very wrong answer. However, if you are a junior from my university, hi, I'm very sorry uh, because I've been told that I have an unapproachable aura because I'm very awkward, and also I tend to look angry with things because I kind of am. But if you have questions about this class in particular, uh, I don't mind answering as a senior and not as some stranger on the internet, so don't be afraid, please. I'm begging you. Uh, I hope this has been insightful. Or if you don't really care much for the breakdown, I hope it was fun to watch regardless at the very least. Uh, what's one thing I learned from this class? It's that people should, if you're considering animation, you should probably buy that one animation book that everyone talks about. The animation. Uh, survival toolkit or something. I'll post. I'll put a picture here. But it's that one book that pretty much everyone in animation has. You should get it. I think there's an iPad app for it too. If you don't want a big book. Thank you for watching. <laughs>